Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm your host, Seishu. And as always, I have an interesting guest for you today. And today's guest happens to be Sean Kernan, a photographer, a teacher, and an author who's just written a book called Looking Into the Light, Creativity and Photography. Um, as you can probably see from your uh, screen, I'm actually got, I've got the book in front of me, and I've got Sean Kernan in front of me as well. Uh, Sean, thanks for joining us. Appreciate the, the time. Happy to be here. Let's do this. Uh, I really wanted to get right into why you wrote this book. Why was it so important for you to write this book right now? Um, gosh, what a question. You really sprung that one. <laughs> the, the way it started, I mean, I've been teaching for 30 plus years and um, and I've been teaching in, in kind of an unusual way, uh, a very unusual approach, as far as I know. I mean, I think everybody should be teaching this way. But, um, And a couple of years ago, about three years ago, I was approached by a major publisher who said, could you get your workshop into a book? And I said, I have no idea. Um, and I was a little concerned because I thought the best part of any workshop is the other students, the other people, because they bounce off each other and that kind of thing. But I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And I wrote a chapter and an outline and so forth. And as I was doing that, I looked at the format that this publisher brought their books out in, and I thought, boy, I'm, I would really have to change this in order to fit what they do, in order to make their uh, publicity department happy and all that kind of thing. And so I, when, I, when I had it done, I went to the editor, who I really liked and still like, we're still, still in touch, and I said, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily, this is what I want to do, and I don't think we're going to be a mix necessarily. And he looked at it and he said, I think you may be right. Um, but, you know, the wonderful thing is that the ebook now lets you, lets you just plunge ahead and do something, and it saves you a... Uh, Fifty or sixty thousand dollar printing and shipping bill. So um, I just kept going, one foot in front of the other. Uh, the editor very kindly has read it at several different stages and been helpful. Right. And um, so it's it's you know how you do how you do one thing. Let's say you go out and you take a photograph of something, and then you say, and it comes out any better than anything you thought could, and then you say, I wonder if I could do another, and then you can and. You do another and another, and that's kind of how this one, how this book uh, has evolved. Lovely. Um, one of the, the key ingredients of the book, I think the, the main topic of the book, if I'm reading it correctly, is about photographers in this particular instance, and perhaps anybody else looking at reading the book, uh, regaining that sense of wonder and discovery as a child. Uh, you, you've mentioned that at least a couple of times. And it's that sense of discovery and, and uh, wonder, I guess, uh, that, uh, that, a, that a child has and an adult somehow loses across the, the plane of time um, that, you, that you are trying to re regain. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right yeah to say that? You're exactly right. And, and pointing to childhood is, is a device. But really, I, I mean, I had it when I first picked up a camera. You probably had it around then, too. When... You were not looking for a job. You were not looking for self-identity. You were, were not even looking for more pictures, but it was a way of focusing your looking around. Um, a child does have that kind of spaciousness of mind that, that an, adult, an adult looks at something and starts to plummet and make up the reasons and construct it. One of the, one of the metaphors, is it a metaphor or a simile? I, I never can get them straight. Um, that I use in the book is that if a, um, if a Secret Service agent walked into this room and the president was going to be speaking here in an hour, he'd be looking around, he'd be saying, where are the windows, where are the doors, how could somebody get out of here? A, um, a, a uh, uh, interior decorator could walk in and say, this paint is all wrong and we need some pillows. And a photographer would walk in and say, where's the picture here, where are the photographs? But a child would walk in and he wouldn't say anything. He would see the whole thing. And he would see all the things that, the, uh, that these other people would see, plus more. He would see possibilities in every direction. You might hear the sounds of the room, too. Right. So that's, once, and, and that's sort of how I was when I first started photographing. 
And I think everybody is, is that way. So you can get it as an adult, and then you just have to get it back. And, and this book is about getting it back. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, in, a, in a sort of complimentary interview that you had with John Paul Caponegro, which I mm -hmm. saw just today, thanks to your Facebook post, uh, you, you talk about uh, making the space and clearing the forest. Uh, again, probably more, uh, more imagery than, than, than <laughs> most people even deal with in a day. But uh, you, you say that's when the unicorn appears. What do you mean by that? What do you mean well, by the unicorn appearing? Is that is that is that Lady Luck, or is it uh, is it is it uh, the fact that the image actually happens in front of us? No, I, I actually think that the woods are full of unicorns. Okay. <laughs> I hope. Um, no, that the um, I, I'm talking really about allowing things, allowing you know wonder and mystery and and photographs and sounds and songs. Um, what what what. The unicorn means to me is having, having stumbled into photography, it was like finding a unicorn, or it actually wasn't a unicorn, it was a horse, wasn't it? It was a horse in a, grazing in a clearing. And uh, you get on the horse, I got on the horse, slowly, carefully, gently, didn't know what would happen. And the horse started to run slowly, and then faster and faster, and he ran away with me for years. And he took me to places I had no idea would even be there. Nothing, nothing, all entirely out of my experience. And so I then spent years training the horse, and I could get it to do pretty much whatever I wanted. So if a, if a client wanted a picture taken on a sunny day and it wasn't, I knew how to make it look sunny and that kind of thing. I could get the horse to do anything. But at a certain point, I could only get the horse to do what was already in my mind. And I realized I had to teach the horse to run away again. And, and that's a lot of what the book is about. It's a lot of the exercises are about um, letting things take you over, letting events take you over, and just being, being sort of empty and expectant in those situations. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a devil's advocate for just a, just a few yes. seconds. Um, I like the idea of running away and, and doing things that are sort of forgive forgive the uh, the, uh, the expression spur of the moment, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> with the horse involved, you know. Uh, but what happens when you're you know if you are a working photographer, a working photojournalist, you've got an assignment to to come up with, you've got you've got a client to satisfy, and they're not ready for you to play. Uh, that's, uh, uh, working photography, professional photography, is a totally different thing. Indeed, um, if you're sent out to uh, photograph something, you just have to come back with it. And if you have a better idea, and they've had 10 meetings about getting to this thing, they really don't want your better idea. They're not interested. Um, and I'm very good at that. I mean, I, I, I consider myself very professional. I've walked into all kinds of situations where, where they were unpromising, and I came back with something. Um, so that it's very important, the discipline, knowing how to do stuff, knowing how to make things happen, knowing how to marshal something just by uh, your focus. Uh, on the other hand, if that's all you do, and if your real spirit and your taproot and your heart is in exploration and discovery, you have to do that too. You have to keep the same thing going. And, and most people don't. You know, one goes through a phase of, of uh, sort of getting everything down, getting everything under control and so forth. And then 10 or 15 years later, people say, I'm competent, but where did fun go? Where, where is fun mm -hmm. in this? Where is not knowing in this? So I, I have always, throughout my whole career, kept something going. Um, some kind of project for myself. I've been working uh, the stuff in prison, a boxing club in Africa. Right. I'm leaving on uh, Monday next week to go back. I, I went out to the Crow Reservation in Montana a few years ago, and I'm going back. It'd be my fourth trip. And, and it's kind of, in a way, going that kind of thing. It's like going back to the first months and years of photography for me to bring that element back into it. Would you, would you call that element uh, play? I mean, is that a simple... Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Okay. That's yeah. exactly what it is. But play is, not, play is serious. 
if, you've, if you have a kitten if you, and you see the, the mother cat grabs the kitten and, you know, claws at its stomach like that, it looks like fun. But she's teaching it how to kill things, you know. Uh, play is, is, is extremely serious. And that's, um, do you have, I don't know if you have any kids or I not. Do. I do. So you, you, you probably know what it's like to, to watch them creating the world on a rainy afternoon by just making up games and absolutely and, and kind of thing. That's where imagination gets its workout. Um, and, and going back to that, I mean, there, every, every profession has room for that. Every profession has need for that. There's a, the, I, uh, there's a wonderful story. The guy in, at the beginning of um, World War II, when the British were being attacked by German planes, and they really didn't have any good air defenses. And they said, we have to come up with a fighter plane. We don't have a good fighter plane. And the chief engineer said, it will take us a year to do the slide rule mathematics on the design of this thing. And we don't have a year. In a year, it'll all be over. He sat down, he took a piece of paper, and he sketched a wing. And it didn't look like any other wing. It was slightly raked forward. It didn't look like any other wing at all. And he, and he said, you guys start building this, and you guys start doing the math. And they got it built before the math was done. And it was perfect. It was, it was I forget what the name of the plane was. But, but every, every profession needs to know how to do this, science in particular. Indeed, indeed. Tell us a little bit more about uh, the co construction of your book. Your book isn't just a book to be read and just sort of set aside. Uh, you go through ideas, exercises, and what you call practice. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the, sort of the, the, the very foundations of the book. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's not a book to be read in one sitting. It's probably a book to be read over a, a, a good, good you know, period of time yeah. where you can actually go out, try things, and figure it out, and perhaps even write a journal entry and say, you know, this worked and this didn't work or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what do you when when it comes to when it comes to the actual work? How do you see the work of photographers in this case being presented once they do the work? Do you feel like it could be an it could take in any shape or form, or is it would you would you recommend a certain process even for that? Yeah, no, I don't. I wouldn't even recommend a uh, a particular direction in going through the book. You could, it's circular. It is my New favorite word is stochastic, which means that, yeah. you know that it uh, it can yeah, occur in yeah. any direction, in any order, in any shape. Okay. And and it, as much as I tried to structure the book to some extent, uh, it does mirror most of our explorations in photography, which begin with you know one happens and then maybe another and then maybe another, and it it it's like popcorn. It goes off in its own t time and direction. Um, so, so in the end, what do you wind up with? Well, if you if you if you take a uh, class in landscape photography, you could expect to wind up with a little stack of landscape pictures. Or if you did portrait lighting, you could mm -hmm. expect some well lit portraits and that kind of thing. Um, in this case, w the real product, the result, the outcome is is you, your mentality, and your mind. And at that point. Um, I think things have a way of telling you where to go and of letting you know what you need to know. I mean, they, they, let's say if you were studying cooking, you wouldn't dice onions for a week, and then when you have that down, all right, let's make a roux. You, you make a dish, you just, and, and you try and say what what it's okay, what does it need, right. what's it like, and then what would go with this dish once you get it down, and that kind of thing. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge believer in the project. I mean, the north, there's a whole chapter in the end about the project and uh, because it, 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 you know, when, when time opens up, when time allows, you don't say, what will I do today? You'll, you'll, you'll pick that up wherever you left it off and you're sort of laying one brick on top of the other. Indeed. Indeed. Um, when it comes to it, you talk about a wider awareness. I think we're going to go back into the book a bit and, and talk about creating a wider awareness. Mm -hmm. um, how, do you equate that to mindfulness, as the Buddhists talk about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say creating it. I would say shutting up and letting it occur, letting it present itself. 
Okay. Um, I've, done, I've done a lot of theater work, and you, you, it references that in the book. But the great thing about theater work is that you can, you can learn all the, your lines and all that thing, but you never really know what's going to happen, and that's when the excitement, that's when the lightning goes off, which is when the, it, these two things... Samuel Johnson had this wonderful uh, expression. He said, wit is the unexpected copulation of ideas. <laughs> I've always loved that line. I use it every chance I get. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and um, so that's, that's it's, it's less a matter of, of getting it done, it's, but in getting in this state. I think creativity is a state. I don't think it's an act you do. I think it's something that you kick in all the time and, uh, and you turn to all the time. And the less you know, the more upended you are, the more you have to rely on it, which is why if you look at my projects, I mean, to go to prison, I spent five trips to prison. I've, I've been, I've made five trips to India. I've been all over India. I've been uh, the, the Kampala Boxing Club. It was, it's all like visiting another universe. And the wonderful state of stimulation that you wind up in when you hit the street in, in Delhi the first morning, totally jet lagged, and you say, where am I? And you see everything. You see everything, you know, you don't, you never go on autopilot. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. And that's, in a sense, what these exercises do are, in a small way, is project you into that. They're all things that everybody knows how to do already. There's no learn how to walk in a tightrope or something like that. Uh, everybody, they're simple, simple little things. And yet, they disorient you. They, they make you, they project you into discomfort. And that's exactly where you want to be. And most people... Talking professionally, yeah. for example, m what you want to do if you're working professionally is get rid of all the discomfort. If anything can go wrong, you want to you want to know it a week in advance and get rid of that stuff, um, which is very different than than the real creative work, which is, you know, here's here's a spool of thread, a telephone, and a feather. Make something out of this. Mm -hmm. Tell me a story. Tell me a story about this. We did, a, we did a wonderful exercise once, and it just happened spontaneously. This guy walked in a class. This was in New York, and he had a package. And it was, it was wrapped up, brown paper, string, and very beat up looking. It obviously been out for a long time. I said, where did you get this? He said, uh, he said I found it on the Brooklyn Bridge at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he said, he said, I can't open it. I said, I don't think you should open it. It's much, whatever it is, this way, it's better. And I said, the, the assignment for next week is to write a little story about how this came to be on the Brooklyn Bridge at 2 o'clock in the morning. And everybody had these stories about this, this package. So, you know, surprise. Indeed, indeed. I think, I think being open to those elements of uh, surprise, as you call it, uh, is very key. It's very important for photographers. And I think, uh, I mean, thinking back to a recent conversation I had with a, uh, a director of communications, you know, we're going through the plan uh, line by line, and and now I'm rethinking all of that. Mm -hmm. thanks, thanks to our conversation here, I feel like uh, there are certain things that certainly need to be in place for for things to happen, for me to deliver those images to her. But there's also should be room for the 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 undefined the, the thing that, that just sort of happens by sheer luck yeah. as you call it yeah. So. yeah that's sort of what you're praying for you know in a yeah. way and and which may not always fly with your client right as, as you as you may have it may have happened to you that way <laughs> i had i had the biggest job i ever had by which i don't mean the most elaborate but the the biggest payday i mean it was just ridiculous you know because um, it was going all around the world on billboards, magazines, television. They wanted everything. And it just made me so nervous. That I said, well, what can I do that's possibly worth it? And the, and the art director said to me at the beginning, he said, don't do anything too interesting, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? so, but other people will look at it and say, my God, that is great. Go with that. And right. Then you're home. Indeed, indeed. You have to know how to do both, really. <laughs> indeed. Um, tell us again, again, where can one find this book? I believe it's uh, only available for iBooks at uh, this time. Uh, what's, the, what's the website that people can check out? The website is lookingintothelight, one word, dot com. Dot com. Easy and there's, uh, there's, there's some sample chapters there. Right. 
you know, the, the thing that goes missing in a book that, was, that would be in a workshop is the interaction of people. So I've set up um, some galleries on it, and people can try exercises and upload their results into these galleries and kind of see what each other are doing. And uh, some, some other videos. We just put up the one with John Paul this morning. And uh, so, you know, it's growing. The site is going to be very interesting as it goes along. That sounds lovely. I want to uh, it's thank you. having a job, man. <laughs> I, want to, I want to thank you again for your time. And I want to wish you uh, great success uh, thank wherever you. you're going on your next trip. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye.